Hey folks, Jessica here. Happy Valentine's Day. So I have not been playing a lot of Brand Blue, as you might have noticed, but I logged in today to see what's going on, and once you know it, my girl Vera is getting her seventh SSR version, eighth version overall. So if you've been following this channel any length of time, you probably know that Vera is my favorite character, ultimate yandere lesbian lover. And also one of the most popular characters in the game, given that she has seven SSR versions. If you don't follow the trajectory of Vera versions, uh, if we're counting the SR version, her first version was a story SR, Dark. Uh, then she got her SSR version, which was also Dark. And then she got, what was next? We got Summer Vera, who is Earth. And I believe next was Caterpillar and Vera, which uh, was Water. And then we got, I think Grand Vera was next, which was light, uh, still very good. And then Wind Vera was um, the next one. That's just General Pool. And also, I believe, a tie in to her original song, Another Sky. If you never watched that song, that music video, it's great. Just look it up on YouTube. And then the promotional Vera from the Blu ray slash DVD in her red dress, her super cute red dress, where she's dancing with Catalina and telling her all the things. That came with the Blu ray. And then we're getting another Fire Vera, which I suppose is fair since the first one was a promo. Uh, and this is Valentine's Vera, and I'm so happy to roll another Vera. Of course I'm rolling another Vera. Like, if you know me at all, you know I'm rolling on Vera. So let's jump into it. Yeah, there's been seven SSR Veras, eight Veras overall, untold number of Vera skins. I haven't really looked too much uh, at Vera's kit. I did take a quick gander. She seems to be pretty good, actually, for very hard fights, especially. But we can take a quick look-see. I don't quite have a full spark, so we'll have to fill something. We'll do what's necessary to bring Vera home. Uh, but yeah, oh, a free pull. Yeah, let's just jump right into it. So here's my free pull. Nothing. Okay, fine. All right, what does Vera do? I'll take a quick gander. Um, let's see. Oh, she's so cute. She's so cute. Okay. Affection Flambe. Massive fire damage to foe and cage of lights cooldown. What's cage of light do? Fire damage to all foes. Uh, delay effect, divine jail. If you're sending you to jail, appropriate. Charge diamonds don't fill up, can't use special attacks. Okay, it's kind of like, um... A one-turn para, I guess. There's there's multiple versions of similar skills, so that 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 is useful. Vermilion Aegis Merge. Consume Vermilion bits to activate Vermilion Aegis Merge. While well, in effect, boost the defense and debuff resistance. Substitute effect receives all ally attacks. Convert normal da convert damage taken to wind damage. Nullify foe normal attacks. This seems very similar to Aegis Merge. Um, might actually be better. And you look at some of the numbers behind it. That's very exciting because Aegis Merge is actually what makes Grand uh, Vera still very useful for many high difficulty fights. Rugalist. Uh, let's see. Instant charge attack standby to caster. Rugalist effect. Boosts charge bar to 100% and end of turn while in effect. How long does it last? Charge bar boosted to 100% and end of turn. Can't be removed. Last two turns. So show. Uh, show um, ignite herself once and then auto ignite for several turns, which ends the cooldown on Cage of Light. Nice. How does she get bits? Vermilion bits. Low HP. Okay, fine. Someday I'll fly with you. Low HP, boost to attack and charge attack specs. Deal multi attack. Nice. Doesn't say triples, so I assume it's double or triples. Caps incoming wind damage at 5k per hit. Someday I'll fly with you seems pretty strong. Because capping damage at 5k per hit means there's a lot of things that would easily kill her or won't kill her, and she does have a substitute, uh, which potentially means she can tank some things just flat out that she shouldn't be able to. That That's very in line with Grand Vera. That's actually, I think, a little bit better than Grand Vera, so that's very exciting. Okay, my love is immortal. Vera gains a vermilion bit at the start of battle and every five turns. Uplift effect when Vermilion bit is granted. She charges quite fast, it seems like. She has many ways of building a charge bar. And um, I don't know how many bits she starts with. So that's gonna be a question. Like, how long can she keep Vermilion or Aegis Merge up? 
and what is the cap on bits. I can kind of, I can look in the wiki to find some of this stuff out, I'm sure. I lied, I cannot find how many vermilion bits she can store. That, that's an interesting question. Um, we'll figure it out. If you know Granvira, Granvira gets uh, a bunch of bits uh, when she charge attacks. Um, but this Vera doesn't operate like this. Uh, uh, this Vera would be freaking broken if she got bits on charge attack because uh, she can just give herself instant charge attack. Uh, so yeah, we'll figure that out. What's her weapon do? If you're wondering what the other characters do, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. I only bothered looking at Vera. I'm sorry I'm like this. I'm not sorry I'm like this. This is who I am. Don't you judge me. What's her charge attack look like? What's her charge attack look like? Oh shit. Oh shit. She goes, she does the yandere eyes. I love her. I love her. Okay. Uh, let's see. Arcane Rouge. Rouge Ordeal. Massive fire damage all foes. 10% boost to all allies' charge bars. That's potentially pretty good for someone turn kill setups, I imagine. Big boost to fire allies' attack. Small boost to fire allies' charge attack damage. Boost to fire allies' charge attack damage cap. This weapon actually seems pretty good. Hopefully, we pull four of her. We'll see. Let's jump in some pulls. All right, let's get into it. Also, the Uma Musume event is finally happening. It was only a matter of time, folks. Uh, Uma Musume, you don't know, is doing hugely well. Its gotcha game is doing great. Its anime is fantastic. Definitely recommend you watch it. Season two is better than season one. It's way more serious. It's like uh, season one's fun and happy-go-lucky. Season two is like about overcoming adversity and injury and and like overcoming hardship. It's great. I love Tokai Teo. Anyway, uh, um, also the character you get from that, um, which is I believe Special Week, Silence Suzuka, and Tokai Teo as uh, one multi-character character. Pretty good actually for a uh, a free character. Like definitely worth considering, especially if you're nearer. They're not like gonna be meta, but they're actually very strong relative to other free characters you get. Anyway, let's do it. So who else is on here? There is Ladiva, great lover. Uh, Vera, and then um, uh, Cassius. I don't know anything about all these other characters, uh, so we'll find out if we pull them. But yeah, let's do some pulls. So, oh, I do have a ticket. Just actually, yeah, okay, we'll do the 10 pull ticket. The goal is to grab four copies of Vera. Well, there's, ooh! There's one, I think, on 4, an SSR on 4, and one on 10, which is where we want to see it for a new character. So 1, 2, 3, what's 4 going to be? Odin, okay, whatever. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10 is going to be Vera, right? You'll love to see it. You'll love to see it. She never misses. <laughs> Shit. So, do you want to see it? I'm going to give you chocolate. Well, that's what you want. You love to see it. I'm super excited. I just I don't know if I'm going to do the rest of the spark. Now I got to think about it. So here's the main consideration. What else can I get on this banner that I actually need besides the, the Diva and Cassius? Because I have, I think, everyone on this banner, right? I'm missing the Lancelot, but honestly, I don't give a shit. Um, sorry, Lancelot, I, I just don't care. Uh, if this were the end of the month banner, I'd be more inclined to because I need another Grand, Mar Grand Armaya weapon, the Evanescence, and I need, uh, I still need a Poseidon, actually, randomly. Uh, but... Okay, let me do a little poking around and see what Cassius actually does and what L L Diva actually do and if they're worth it. I, somehow I, I don't think I'm going to pull that. Let's see. What does Ladiva do? What do you do, girl? Ladiva, gift of love. Massive light damage. Uh, Ladiva, she's light. Activate Magnus Heart Warner 50%, which is a heal. Interesting. Heals the team on charge attack. Uh, removes one debuff, so it's a clear. Uh, boost healer, caster's healing specs, okay. Infinite love, special buff to light allies, attack defense, multi-attack rate, boost to height. 
I don't like hype as a mechanic. I'm just throwing it out there. I feel like it's something they've not actually ever supported enough for it to be that meaningful mechanic. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe it's just me and hype's actually amazing. I've just never been that much of a fan of hype. Uh, the mechanic. I, I like hype otherwise. Uh, cherished Veil. About debuff immunity to all allies one time, so it's Veil. Charm, effect of foe, hit to attack. Okay. Passes. All encompassing love. When allies HP is below 50% on your turn, activates Magnanimous Heart 150%. That's interesting. So she heals on charge attack, and then she also heals when everyone's hurt. This doesn't. This suggests that this has no upper limit how many times it can activate. Activate infinite love upon chain burst ascension. Uh, takes effect even when Ladiva is a sub ally. Oh, has an effect when a sub ally. And infinite love is her buff. She'd be a good support character. Uh, I think the issue with light, if you're going to be healer, is that funf exists and funf is, well, funf. Funf is really hard to beat as a healer. I mean, Ladiva does different things. But Funt is just like the ultimate utility character for almost every situation where you would need a character that even remotely fills that role. And, um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's a tough sell being a light support character that heals because you're always going to get compared to Funt. And I, not many people, I don't know if anybody can win that fight. All right, um, actually, Lady has a weapon. What's it do? Healing Cap. Garrison myth. Uh, Cassius, what do you do? And I'll double check the numbers after this to just triple, quadruple, make sure. Cassius. Lunar decoration, massive water damage, one turn cuts a cooldown, supplemental damage effect, okay? Mirage sign, eat hit water damage from foes, move one buff from all foes, so dispel. Uh, layer edge, two hit water damage random foes, restore water HP, removes one debuff, so a heal and a clear. Uh, lunar paradox, lunar mark to caster, and lunar mark effect to caster, and cooldown for all other skills. Interesting. Uh, let's see, what's lunar mark do, does it say? What does Lunar Mark do? Mirage Sight activates when using a charge attack. Lunar Mark level rises when an ally uses a skill. Mirage Sight activates when water ally uses a skill at level 4. Resets Lunar Mark. This sounds like... Io? Yeah, this sounds like uh, Grand Io, where it's a buff that stacks whenever anyone uses a skill, and then when enough skills are used... Um, an auto nuke will happen. And Io is pretty good. Grand Io is pretty good, but Grand Io does a lot of stuff. Uh, spinal Reflex Circuit 2. When foes use a special attack, end cooldown from Mirage Sign, remove one debuff from Cassius. Chocolate Arch, when ally removes a foe's buff, activate Lunar Edge. So, an auto, like in a lot of ways, an auto nuker slash a character where you can kind of go off by triggering multiple auto nukes. Interesting, I guess. I don't know how... I'm going to suspect that plays similar to Io, who is a good character, but not a character I think I would go all out to spark on. Let me double check some things, though, on the wiki. Okay, just looking at some numbers. Uh, Ladiva first. Infinite Love gives 30% attack, 30% defense, 30% double attack, 15% triple attack. So it's, it's a buff. <laughs> if you think of a character that has an okay buff, Congratulations, you thought of infinite love. Um, yeah, it, it's a fairly stock standard kind of buff. It's not bad. Uh, it's got, what, three turn duration? So it'll be up quite a lot of time of the time, I think, because uh, there's an alternate condition to triggering it. Uh, Ladiva's heal, a healing cap, is capped at 15, 1500, so fairly standard. Yeah, it takes a four burst chain to trigger infinite love. Uh, okay, I mean, it seems fine. I'm not too terribly excited about that. Oh, I should check, um... One second. What's your weapon do? Oh, cute! Uh, bonus water damage effect. I mean, character boost of water allies attack based on that. 
Louis Trias Enmity, and then Garrison. Enmity Garrison weapons are pretty good. Though it doesn't have a four star uncap. I'm sensing I'm sensing Vera favoritism, as it should be. <laughs> Cause Vera's weapon does have a four star uncap. I am clicking on the wrong things. If anyone's like, why does Vera get so much favoritism? I I I can't deny it. There's fucking eight Veras. So yes, there is Vera favoritism. She's one of the most popular characters. What do you want? What do you want from me? I don't make the rules. I just profit from them. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let me find some clarifying information about Cassius. Uh, let's see. Okay, info for Cassius. Uh, there's not actually a lot of information on Cassius uh, on the wiki, so yes. I don't have a lot of clarifying information other than Layer Edge uh, heals for 2214, which seems kind of right. Oh, it's 2214 because it's the year 2022, and then 14 because it's the 14th. So, in commemoration of Valentine's Day, I get jokes. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to pull these other two. I think that is where the spark ends. So, yeah, I don't think I'm actually going to play uh, the Vera Feed episode on camera. Um, I don't like reading through fee episodes on camera, I've concluded, because it's a lot of me just reading into the void, which obviously is what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, I don't really feel like just reading through it. Uh, I've also already watched it, because when she very first came out earlier today, I was like, oh, I gotta know what happens. Uh, so I jumped on the YouTubes and watched her feed episodes. Uh, it's fine. It's cute. Um, it's leading into the Catalina can't joke, can't joke, can't cook joke again. Uh, so yeah, more of Cali the Cat Cook. Um, the one thing that kind of annoys me about it is, and I get it, we're playing a gacha game, so you've always got to make the characters a little bit interested in the main character. I get it. But they always say Jita or Gran, whoever your main character is, Jita or Gran, and third wheel them into the Catalina Vera relationship. It's like, come on. Like, it's been Catalina Vera from the start. Even in the main story. Like, like, it, it's the whole point is Catalina and Vera. Why you third wheel and we in there? It's just awkward. But, um, yeah, I will uncap her and we will play around with her a little bit. Let's see what her uncap looks like. Do I have mats? I haven't played in so long that I don't actually know what I have on hand. Apparently enough. Let's do it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Oh, she's so cute. And then we will book her. We'll throw the book at her. And then uh, I guess we'll beat something up. That's what we usually do. Two bucks, sure, whatever. She is maxed out. Ooh, what is her EMP? Deep F success, charge attack damage cap. I will go ahead and give her... Yep, 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 yep. Give her all the cap ups. Right. can't quite max out the caps up. Give her an intricacy ring, sure. Attack enemy double attack rate. That is f uh, not that good. Whatever, we can do another one. Yes, give us all the charge attack damage cap. Sure, sure, sure. I'll do awakenings later. No, I won't. I'll do it right now. Do I have the mats? I feel like I probably don't have the mats. I don't have the mats. <laughs> okay. Uh, how far can we get her? I don't. Oh boy, it's been a hot minute. I don't have any mats, it seems like. Okay, we'll get back to that part of it, I suppose. Can we take her to three? Okay, we can take her to three. Alright. One... I gotta figure out who I want to fight for. I don't actually know. Who to use her with? Open question. So I think... She's for harder fights. Um... I think she actually replaces Athena that, in a lot of ways, like a defensive, like a more a more defensive Athena, which is kind of a weird thing to say. 
But um, the interesting thing about her is uh, she slows and running her with um, this team means, like with vanilla, means you have quite a lot of access to slows. And fire just has a lot of access to delays in general. And by slow, slow I mean delay. Um, so I think I'll try this setup and I'll go fight um, the wind one. Here we are. Yeah, we'll do that. Because, like, Vera's got um, a delay uh, and then she can also stop diamonds from filling up. And then she can tank when things get real and then she can charge attack a ton, which will let her further delay. Like, she can delay a freaking ton through this. And then if you're using Chirin, then further still. I think she's actually gonna be quite good in this setup. Is this right? It's been a while since I've looked at my fire team. I actually kind of want to cheer in here. Yeah. Swap a uh, sitter for cheer in. Yep. Ah. Uh, yeah. Because we have another um, delay on Michael. And then Shirin's gonna refresh. I think we just have infinite freaking delays. Like, if I ran uh, Athena instead of uh, Tian Esser, uh, instead of Tian Esser, that, that would be too many delays. Uh, but yeah, we'll try this team. Okay, so we're in Eva Yar, who's not a cat right now. A shame. Um, I played around with Vera a little bit, and I was under uh, the wrong impression about how some of her skills work. So, Grand Vera who she's largely based off of, has this mechanic called bits. Uh, she starts with three bits, and uh, if she charge attacks, she goes up to, I believe, six bits. Now, every turn, she'll use a bit to enhance her attacks, basically. But if she has Aegis Merge Up, which she can only activate if she has a bit, um, she basically gets super, super tanky, much like this Vera does as well. And then she'll consume a bit every turn, and uh, she'll go out of Aegis Merge when she runs out of bits or when three turns pass. That is not how this one works, which is why I was confused. She starts with one bit, uh, and while she has it, it uh, boosts her charge bar rate. But in addition to that, uh, she only needs one bit to activate Vermilion Aegis Merge. And while it's in effect, she is super tanky. She's got increased defense, debuff resistance, substitutes, converts, damage, win, nullifies, normal attacks. But it just lasts three turns flat out. And then it's got a seven turn cooldown. So I would actually say in that respect, she's a little bit stronger than Grand Vera. Because one of the issues of Grand Vera is it can be tricky to time when you have bits in order to activate Aegis Merge. There can be situations where you want to activate it, but you don't have the bits and then you're in trouble. Um, she should always be able to activate it until she uses that first bit and it comes back after five turns. So it's a lot more predictable, I would say, a lot more predictable when she can actually use Vermilion Ages Merge, which is, I would say, huge, actually huge for her. Like, that makes her a lot easier using Ranvira. So I think what I can do in this fight is actually go a little bit quicker than I normally would. I don't know if this is advised, but I think I'm just gonna, like, um... I'm not normally I hold a lot of things uh, in in anticipation of omens, but I think I can just soak some of them with how she works. We'll see. I'm gonna play a little bit faster and looser than I normally do, to be honest. I'm still not gonna waste any delays, so let's yeah, let's let's go. So let me pull up um pull up her actual wiki page because I want to check something. Sorry, I'm making the audio cut out because I clicked off. Divine Jail. What does Divine Jail do exactly again? It does not say. I, I, I just want to know some details about how Divine Jail works and how it interacts with elements, but I don't think we're going to find that out. Okay, so first one, 20 hits. Um, uh, well, first, we're going to delay this thing. And then there's Divine Jail. So Divine Jail... Can't fill up charge diamonds, can't use special attacks. That won't stop an omen. Those things usually don't stop omens. So we'll just, uh, we'll interrupt this. That, that's easy enough for us to do. 
Like, we really should, we should be able to do this, no problem, like, maybe a whole charge attack. Like, we can easily stop this omen. I think the next one, maybe I'll just eat it with Aegis Merge and see how it goes. Now we can do a full chain burst and see her charge attack. So, the thing that's nuts about her, though, is um, she's going to refresh, I believe, yeah, and Cage of Light's cooldown. So she can kind of spam her delay, because every time she charge attacks, she's going to be able to delay again, in addition to its natural cooldown. In addition to, she can auto-ignite with uh, Rouge -a List. Uh, so, yeah, she seems exceptionally powerful for fights where... Uh, you need a lot of control. We can see her charge attack. I love the yandere eyes. I love it. Alright. Yeah, she's really good, I think. Um... I mean, in general, she'll be fine for most fights, but I think mostly for really hard fights is where you'll want her. I think she'll be good on full auto. She's probably pretty good on full auto, too, as, like, the defensive element of your full auto teams are falling over. But yeah, so, um, she can delay again. Uh, with, we'll get rid of that diamond, sure. Uh, I could stop this, uh, with, like, Sun or, like, uh, TNS or whatever, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and just Aegis merge this, because I want to see... For a million ages, merge will stop this. So, interestingly, she consumed that. Um, we're on turn four, so the bit went away. I'm kind of curious if the bit comes back next turn. I believe it's every five turns, regardless of whether or not you've used it, which would make it even stronger, because that means I could just have it ready to go again. I'm not quite sure that's how it works. We'll find out. I'll use you, I guess. And then everyone else can just sit on their abilities. So this, in theory, should basically kill whoever it hits. And it was going to hit Anila, but I substit uh, substituted, um, I subbed it on Avira with Vermilion Ages Merge. And I think this might just get, she just might straight up stop this. Like, it might just not kill her. It might just do, like, 5k. <laughs> yeah! She could just eat the Vermil she could just eat the Mach 3, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Um it doesn't look like the bit came back though, so maybe it is in relation to when she used it. I'll have to see. Then it might not be counting the first turn. I don't know. Let me heal everybody a little bit. That's amazing though. And then she's got it for three more turns. It's not or two more turns. It's not like um uh Grand Vera where it's relative how many bits you have. She should just have it. And she's going to charge attack, so she'll be able to delay again. Not that it's going to be that much of an issue. You know, there is a slight danger that I, um, I get so overwhelmed with the power that I uh, crash into something I actually can't just absorb. I think this will hit her, because this hits all allies. I don't think she will... I don't know if she can soak this one. I'm not quite sure. So I'm gonna stop this one. Which, you know, easy enough. Oh, and her bit did come back. So yes, her bit comes back every five turns. So it didn't come back last turn because it was five, and we start on one, obviously. So it's turn six would be five turns. So you can... So it's about to expire. This is the last turn you'll have Vermilion Ages Merge, but I have the bit, so I could just, on the next cooldown, um, when the next cooldown resets, I can just activate it again, no problem. It, it does have an eternal cooldown, obviously, um, but you have, there's various ways of getting around that, uh, like Chirin, who we're not ready to do. Um, so I could assassinate this guy, I guess. I think I will. <laughs> I kind of want to give things time to cool down, because I feel like there's a slight danger, a slight danger that if I go too fast, I'm going to get in trouble. But you know, I also just kind of want to assassinate him. We'll give it some time, we're not going to play it like a complete idiot. Okay, okay. Now, this guy, I think I'm going to attack this turn, right? Yeah, and it will hit her for zero, because she nullifies normal attacks! 
amazing, amazing. And our four chain burst, I'll be ready with the the, the full chain, um, faded chain, whatever. Great, great. Um, and then we'll save all the other stuff to interrupt. Ah, perfect. I want to get her Aegis Merge off cooldown, and then I can just, like, yeet this guy in the sun. Because she's just going to be able to soak everything for the rest of the fight, I imagine. I just need some ability to like you just need some ability to cut her cooldowns and then you could just you could just freaking like go to town with Aegis Merge. So three turns. Throwing this guy in jail. I can probably interrupt this actually. Huh, can I do this number of hits? I sh do I have echo on anybody? Um I do have an echo on Anilla. Fuck it, we'll just sun it. That's gonna push this guy too hard. If she does, she dies. It's fine. Because I don't want to push him past 35 right now. No, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We got this. We got this. We got this. We, we don't got this. Goodbye, Anilla. So that's what happens if you don't absorb it. You get lethal hit for a billion. It's fine, though. Zeta brings even more delays. So uh, I'm going to, um, yeah, she's going to cool down turn after next. So we're just going to push this turn. Oh, I transitioned her. Him. That's not ideal. It's fine. This is fine. Did I transition? Yeah, it's a 40% transition. Gonna hit pretty hard. That was always the thing with Eriar. Eriar hits real fucking hard. As you can see from getting Zeta getting clapped. So, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guard this turn. Um, not gonna all things. And then Vera can Aegis merge after this and we can just go to town. Actually, we just repeatedly put this guy in jail also. We'll instant charge her. Oh, Alanon, you're almost... We can almost go... Okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Um, I don't need to guard, but I, I want to, like, abuse Aegis Merge. Okay, so I believe, yeah, Aegis Merge is off cooldown now, so now, like, we're fucking basically invincible. Like, because everything's just going to hit her for one. I want to use Alanon's triple thing, but, you know, fuck it, it's fine. Actually, we're just going to fold this guy in half. Alright. So now in theory, in theory, in theory, anything he does is going to be reduced to zero because it'll be a normal attack. Yeah, yeah, nice try, idiot. Nice try. So that pretty much just completely like negates his little trigger there. And now I can activate Alanon's thing. I didn't really get to use her, um, her, um, Ignite, but it's fine. Oh, you know what? I can cheer in, and then I'll have access to, um, I'll have access to Aegis Merge again. Oh, she's hitting her with zero! It's amazing! Actually, I don't have a bit, though, so I will not be able to Aegis Merge, but it doesn't matter, because this thing's about to die. I totally did that in the wrong order. You did not see that? Actually, you know, what am I even doing? This thing's just gonna freaking die. Actually, what am I saying? She still has Aegis Merge up, so it actually doesn't matter. Yeah. Wow. I'll fade a chain him for one for the road. She is powerful defensively. Like Yeah, 
Yeah, that's what he said. Um, okay. So, thoughts. 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 I love her as thoughts. Um, hmm. Okay. So yeah, thoughts on her. Uh, ooh. She's real good. Uh, <laughs> obviously. I, I think that, like, obviously that's not the hardest fight in the game or anything, but any any stretch. Like, not that bad a fight at all. Um, though I would add, like, not exactly a cakewalk unless you've been through it a few times, but I feel like it's a pretty easy fight with her toolkit. I, I think that's gonna be my takeaway from her she's gonna make a lot of fights a lot easier than they normally are uh because she's very much like grand vera in that she is such an oppressively strong defensive character but i would say even more so than grand vera because grand vera gets like you just merge is the big thing but grand vera can also give your team like guaranteed triple uh, once which is nice um and has like um a dispel. So Grand Vera is a little bit of a different kit, but Grand Vera can't do a lot of things she does, like just repeatedly chain delays. Cause like like I said, she can delay and then divine jail them, so they can't like do do they can't do stuff basically. But then um, she can reset Cage of Light to delay them again and divine jail them again and divine jail again. Charge them so Philip can't use special attacks. And then she can Rouge a List to give herself full charge bar to Divine Jail them again after charge attacking, uh, Cage of Light them again after charge attacking, and then Auto Ignite so she'll be able to reset it again, and then she just do so many Cage of Lights. And Fire already has a lot of access to delay, so like I think there's a lot to be said about how much exactly she could potentially delay somebody. Not to mention, Fire just has so much access to delay. Uh, like, uh, Zeta can delay, she can double delay, um, uh, Anilla can delay, uh, yeah, Athena can delay, um, one of the weapons, Erictonius, Erictonius, I think, um, the spear from Athena, uh, the farm wolf spear from Athena, I believe has a delay on a charge attack. Fire has just so much access to delay. Michael delays. Like you can bring you can bring more summon so like, there's so much access to delay and fire. And then the, obviously the big thing she brings though is um just this outrageous ability to tank damage. Uh much like Grand Vera. But I think the difference between her and Grand Vera is Grand Vera occasionally occasionally is awkward to use because of the timing in which you have to get bits. You kind of have to plan very far ahead to make sure you don't screw up the bits when you need them. But the way Vermilion Bit works, which again, you just get one every five turns, um, so uh, it's very rarely gonna be the thing that prevents you from using Vermilion Aegis Merge, and you're always gonna get full value for Vermilion Aegis Merge, because there's definitely Grand Rare situations where you use Aegis Merge, but because you're low on bits, you're only gonna get a turn or two out of it, you're pretty much always gonna get the full three turns out of this. Um, yeah, and then just generally capping uh, wind damage to herself and generally boost attack in charge attacks backs and just always multi-attacks. She's very much like a character that has been just passively updated to the standards of 2022 for a limited character. Like, if you don't have some form of guaranteed multi, it's like you're probably an older character, honestly, because like all the really, like most of the really strong meta characters have some form of guaranteeing multi at this point. She's amazing. I mean, I'm biased because Vera is my favorite character. Love the younger lesbians, but um, I, I think like she, she's definitely one of the stronger characters been released lately. You want to score? I have not done one of these in a while, and this is not character spotlight. But I probably will not do another separate video for character spotlight. So let me think. I'll give you a score. It has been so long since I've done this. I can't even remember the metrics I do. I think it's usually. Um, is how for how well they perform in fast fights so like one turn kill to two to three turns tops how f how well the character performs on full auto and how well the character performs in hard fights so 
for quick one turn kill to a couple turns. She doesn't have a lot, honestly, that gives her a unique advantage there, but she does have a naturally... Um, she's got a naturally boosted... Like, she has an innate boosted attack and charge attack spec, and she innately multi-attacks and double attack her higher. So I would say she's actually probably an A for that. Like, not an S. Like, she's not amazing for quick fights. But she is going to charge attack faster, or harder, than a character, just a regular character. I think that's kind of what you want. Um, for like a one turn kill setup, uh, she does have two charge attack cap, um, two charge attack cap up uh, EMPs. Like between these and the ring, that's thirty percent charge attack damage cap up. I believe, I believe, her passive is thirty percent cap up, so that's sixty cap up right there. Like she can chain charge attack pretty hard. Uh, let's see, four full auto, she delays on full auto, and. She should be able to reset her delay on full auto, which is great. Um, I need to actually check to see if she'll activate Aegis Merge and Ruja List on full auto. Actually, let me check that real quick. Okay, we're back. Uh, yeah, she does in fact activate all her stuff on uh, full auto, which <laughs> is great. Uh, yeah, she will turn one Cage of Light, obviously. She also turned one Vermilion Aegis Merge, uh, and she'll have the bit to do at turn one. And then she'll also turn one Ruja List, uh, which means that turn she'll be full charge bar. She'll charge attack, uh, which will reset Cage of Light. Then she'll Cage of Light the next turn. She'll sell Vermilion Aegis Merge up, so she'll be tanking and delaying. And then she'll attack and reset, charge attack and reset Cage of Light because Ruja List is an auto ignition for several turns. She'll be spamming all their abilities for a few turns. Great. And then past the first few turns, she'll get a bit back just naturally. You don't have to time it. So, uh, yeah, Vermilion Age Merge will come back up. Probably save you a lot of damage. She'll continue to... She's freaking great on uh, Full Auto. Uh, I would rate her double S tier on Full Auto. I could see an argument for maybe S tier on Full Auto because not all their skills are offensive. And I know a lot of people are Full Auto. They want all offensive skills. But I think a fair point is there are a lot of fights if you full auto and you're not like very, very, very strong. Um, there's a chance you might just get clapped. Like there's a lot of fights that will just clap you, try and full auto them at some point. I think she actually is more ideally suited than a character of all offensive skills because her defensive stuff works pretty well without being that timing sensitive. It's an, it, it is stuff like delay, which will save you damage, just can happen whenever. And then she's got stuff like you just merge, will, uh, Vermilion Age merge, will just save you damage. And she'll probably allow you to full auto fights that you might not feel as comfortable full autoing, that not, might not be that safe to full auto without her. Like, I think she is great. She's very similar to Athena in a lot of ways. I would say actually probably better than Athena uh, for a lot of fights. Uh, she brings just such a solid defensive kit that works fine on full auto. So yeah, double S tier for full auto. For high difficulty fights, obviously she is double S tier. Uh, she is similar in a lot of ways to Grand Vera, who I would definitely also say is double S tier, but I would say even more so. Um, for hard fights, you gotta think about what you really want there, and yes, really strong defensive capabilities, great. Delay is great, but more so, you want tight control over those abilities and when you can use them. So if you think about Ranvira, the problem I mentioned earlier being tied to bits which you can only get when charge attacking which naturally fall off over time, there are genuinely situations that you come across where you might not have bits to activate Aegis Merge when you need them, or you might need to charge attack but on a specific turn but you're trying to save your charge attack. There's a lot of situations that come up that make Aegis Merge a very powerful tool, but sometimes misaligned just enough that you can't use them when you need them, and maybe you get killed because of that. Vermilion Aegis Merge does not have that problem, because she'll just naturally get the bit. She'll start with the bit, keep the bit, not lose it passively. Uh, when you activate Vermilion Aegis Merge, it's going to do what it does. It's always going to be full value three turns, and then you might get the, the bit back right away. You're certainly going to get the bit back before the natural cooldown goes away. So really, you're only dealing with waiting for the cooldown on this, which is a lot easier to use than Aegis Merge, uh, the Grand Fury's Aegis Merge. So yeah, I would say she's she's double S here for sure for high difficulty fights. And obviously, 
Uh, I'm going to give her a rating of just double S tier overall. I think she's absolutely worth pulling for. She's definitely the strongest of the Valentine characters in this release, and one of the stronger characters that's come out recently, honestly. Uh, she is definitely for full auto and harder fights, but I mean, if you're a new player, she's probably going to carry your ass through a lot of fights too, by just how ridiculously defensively potent she is, and the fact she can just loop delays so easily. But yeah, no, I love her. Um, I am biased. She is my favorite character. She's a yandere lesbian. I'm a yandere lesbian. She's wearing her red valentine's dress. I'm wearing my red valentine's dress. She's blonde. I'm blonde. She's a master of the sword. So I, maybe not that one, but <laughs> I love her. Um, so yeah, double S tier for me. Definitely recommend you roll on her. Uh, if you're pulling for her, good luck with your pulse. Uh, I have not been playing a ton of Grand Blue Fantasy, so I don't know when the next video is going to be. Um, you know me by this point. I dip in and out of Grand Blue. I still am interested in it. I've just been really busy lately. Also, I've been playing a lot of Destiny 2 lately, so I've uh, been kind of doing other things. Also, Destiny 2 expansion, The Witch Queen, comes out next week, so I'll probably, probably be playing a lot of that. I don't know if that's a thing people are interested in seeing content for at all. Let me know, I guess, if you're curious. Maybe I'll record myself playing through just some campaigns or some nightfalls, I don't know, something. Anyway, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. Happy Valentine's Day. I almost said Happy Halloween. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!